Welcome back to our series of presentations on the unification principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. We have learned that the origin of sin lies in the misuse of love and abuse of power. Now, we have to ask why God, who must have known about the fallen acts of the first human ancestors, did not intervene to prevent the act of the fall. If God had stepped in at the moment before the first human ancestors fell, it seems like there would have been no fall and humankind would not have to live in pain in the midst of crimes and wars. Was the fall of man part of God's plan? If so, of course he wouldn't have blocked it. But did God want all of this suffering and evil and terrible history to take place? Did he want that? This is one of the most important unsolved mysteries of the ages. Let me set the record straight. From the unification point of view, the human fall was not God's plan. If it were his plan, why would God have given the commandment not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, warning them that they would certainly die? We have studied why and how God created the universe and human beings. Did he give them the commandment just to watch them disobey it because he knew they were supposed to and then punish them for it? What kind of parrot is that? God put no place for evil into his plan. God only created goodness. Then when God observed the beginnings of evil, why did he not intervene? The answer will tell us also why God did not intervene at any time since the fall or even today. First, we're going to give you three reasons. First, it was to maintain the absoluteness and the perfection of the principle of creation. In accordance with the principle of creation, God created human beings in his image with the character and powers of the creator, intending that we govern over all things as God governs over us. However, for human beings to inherit this creative nature and authority of God, we have to grow to perfection by, by fulfilling our portion of responsibility. We call this period of growth the realm of God's indirect dominion. While people are still in this realm, God does not directly govern them because he wants to allow them to fulfill their portion of responsibility. If God were to interfere with human actions during this growing period, it would be tantamount to ignoring the human portion of responsibility. In that case, God would be disregarding his own principle according to which he intends to give human beings his creative nature and authority and raise us to become lords of creation. God would never deny that. Therefore, in order to preserve the absoluteness and perfection of the principle of creation, God did not intervene in the acts that led human beings to fall. God works through the principle. God created all the creation and its activities based on the principle. And he can only express his almighty power through the principle. It cannot work in an unprincipled situation because God is a God of principle. And to preserve the absoluteness and perfection of the principle, God did not interfere in the fall. Second, in order for God alone to be the creator, God only governs over a principled existence that he has created and does not interfere with unprincipled acts. Therefore, God does not regulate any unprincipled existence that he did not create, such as hell, nor does he interfere with any unprincipled act, such as criminal acts. The reason is 
that if God were to affect the course of such acts, they would necessarily be given the value of God's having created them, and thus they would be recognized as part of the principle. Consequently, if God were to have intervened in the fall of the first human ancestors, he would have been attributing to those acts the value of his creation and recognizing them as principled, creating a new but completely chaotic principle. Further, it was Satan who brought about that situation. So it would be, in fact, Satan who created this new principle. Satan would stand as a creator of the fruits of the fall, equal to God. Therefore, in order for God to remain the only creator, he did not intervene in the human fall. God is not an unprincipled God. He is a principled God. Satan or an evil spirit or an unprincipled criminal have nothing to do with God. These things cannot be part of God's creation. When it comes to unprincipled crime, because it is in the human portion of responsibility, God has to keep silent. God watches the unprincipled criminal acts while feeling tortured, miserable, so sad we can't even imagine. During the growing period, God only intervenes based on the results of our words and actions for which we take responsibility. The third reason God did not intervene was to make human beings, us, the lords of creation. God is the God of heart. God's heart takes substantial joy in his human man, woman, boy, girl, object partners. The creation is a symbolic object partner of God's heart. All things are the direct object partners of human beings. As their subject partners, we feel joy when all things receive joy from us. And we mediate this joy. God feels this joy in us and through us. Therefore, in Genesis 1.28, it states that God gave the blessing to human beings to have dominion over the creation, dominion of love. Accordingly, to have dominion over creation, there's a qualification for human beings. Human beings cannot be subject partners to the creation while in a position equal to the creation. God is qualified to govern us because he is our creator. Likewise, for us to gain the qualifications to rule all things, we must possess the appropriate character and power of creators by becoming co-creators with God. In order to give us creatorship and make us worthy to govern all things, God has human beings perfect ourselves by accomplishing our own portion of responsibility until the end of our growing period. If God were to rule directly and control the lives of human beings who are still in the state of immaturity, they would never fulfill their responsibility. They would never receive God's full creative nature and assume the position of dominion over the creation. God, the author of the principle, would be disregarding his own principle of creation, which he established in order to enable us to inherit the nature of the Creator and govern the creation with true love. Therefore, in order to give us creatorship and raise us as lords of creation, God had to restrain himself from intervening in the acts of immature human beings. We know that God knew about the fallen act, even though he could stop it from happening, he did not interfere. 
not just because it took place, but because, number one, God acts only through the principle of creation. In front of unprincipled acts, God had to force himself to be silent because God placed human beings in the position to have dominion over the creation. Thus, to maintain the absoluteness and the perfection of the principle, for God to remain as the creator and for human beings to have a true dominion over the creation, even though God knew about it and had the power to stop it, he did not interfere in the fallen act. However, God wants us to accomplish our responsibility during the growing period in order to give us his creatorship. We must regard it as a great blessing to inherit the creative nature of God. If we take into consideration that the purpose and quality of godly creativity is completely different from the creative nature of fallen human beings, we will be grateful that God did not intervene and want to fulfill our portion of responsibility and receive God's creative nature. Whether or not people believe in the fall or in religion, humankind is aware that something is very wrong with the world. That is why in every culture we find an expectation that the world is going to end. This is often called an apocalypse. What does this belief tell us? How does it give us insight into the direction of history and what will come in the future? We will discuss this in our next session. Thank you so much for listening. See you then.